video I'm going to show you how to tell if a bond is polar or non-polar. It's very easy to do. And I'll also show you a little bit of theory. Now I say it's extremely easy. The reason is this diagram is all you need to know. You find the difference in electronegativity. If this difference is between 0.4 and 2, you have a polar bond. If it's less than 0.4, you have a non-polar bond. If you prefer, we could write this in maths terms, whichever of these two representations you prefer, you can learn. Uh, to read this, this is simply 0.4 is less than or equal to the difference in electronegativity on the polling scale. It's very important that you do these calculations using a table with values on the polling scale, otherwise you get the wrong answer. And this difference is also less than 2. And for a non-polar bond, the difference in electronegativity is less than 0.4. And just to be absolutely clear, the way you find the difference in electronegativity is you take um, the electronegativity of atom 1 and you subtract it from atom 2. And these vertical lines simply mean always positive. So when you find the difference in electronegativity, this is always a positive number. For example, if you found the difference and you got minus 1, you would think that it's a non-polar bond. That's wrong. You should turn that into a positive number. So if you get a negative, just the way you've decided which one's atom 1 and 2, just throw away the negative. So if you got minus 1, just make it 1, and that means you've got a polar bond. So always positive. So let's just look at electronegativity, because it's very important, and we'll learn a bit about this. So the best way to think about electronegativity is it's an atom's greediness. It measures how greedy an atom is. Greedy atoms, as you can imagine, don't share fairly. For example, if you've got an oxygen bond bonded to a hydrogen bond, the oxygen is a greedy atom. Its electronegativity is high, and its electronegativity is higher than that of hydrogen. So oxygen is greedier. So the electrons are going to be pulled more this way. Because electron is, um, the oxygen is greedy. It wants those electrons. So the electrons are going to be over here. It's not going to be in the middle of the bond. They're going to be closer to the oxygen. And this makes the oxygen side slightly negative. The electrons are closer to that side. Well, if that's slightly negative, that means the hydrogen's obviously going to be slightly positive. So we've got a negative side and a positive side to this structure here. That's a bit like a magnet when you think about it. It has poles. That's why we call it a polar bond. Has poles, polar bond. And just for completeness, let's find the difference in electronegativity. This is atom 1, we'll call it oxygen. This has an electronegativity of 3.44. And hydrogen is 2.2, so we get this answer here. This is between 0.4 and 2, so this bond is polar. See, it's very simple to do, and just remember that electronegative is greediness, and all this seems to fall out. This is important, so we'll put that in a box um, so it stands out a little. Polar bonds are polar because they have poles like a magnet. It's a good way to think about it. But the most important thing is electronegativity. Think of it as greediness. Just equate those two ideas in your head and we'll put that in a triangle because that's very important. Okay, last thing is just to have a few warnings. You need to be careful when you're doing this. It's very simple to do, but you can make some silly mistakes and we'll, um, that could be a big problem for you. So use the polling scale. There are other scales of electronegativity, but if you're going to do this method, the 0.4 and the 2 are defined on the polling scale. If possible, work to two decimal places. The reason is you'll get a number that's 0.4 and you'll think that means it's a polar bond. And when it's not necessarily, it may actually be 0.38, so it's really non-polar. So you have to be careful with that. That's why I say you should work to two decimal places. That avoids the confusion when you get close to 0.4. The table I'd suggest you use, because I know it works, some of them on the internet are slightly dodgy. 
Um, I think the one on Wikipedia is a good table and it gives the numbers to two decimal places. A good one to take note of is carbon bonded to hydrogen. This is a common one that people get wrong. This is a non-polar molecule. Right? It's probably good to memorize that, but if you use two decimal places in your calculations, you'll always find this to be a non-polar bond. So hopefully this video has cleared things up for you and you'll be able to tell the difference between polar and non-polar bonds. Thank you.